to ten minute practice routines with fake Dr. Levin. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of 10 minute practice routines for super busy people with me, fake Dr. Levin. It's so common for people to get so swept up in all the crazy stuff that happens in life that it's just really hard to find time a lot of the time to work on guitar and work on music consistently. And there's just tons of people who really want to get great at guitar but can't find the time to practice. So I want to offer a practice routine and a practice method that will make it so that even if you only have 10 minutes a day, you can still achieve your goals as a guitarist and get better at music consistently. There's one really big concept that I want to talk about first, which is that it's better to practice a little every day consistently than it is to skip a lot of days of practicing, but then practice a ton on the weekends or just a ton one day. If you practice regularly every day, even just a little, but with good focus and consistency and have a clear goal in mind and break it down step by step, you can really internalize any subject and there's a really nice process for this, which is why this whole episode is filmed where you can see what's on my computer screen. So here we see I have this huge word, broad goal, and smaller pieces, and then practice items. So this is the way I like to break down um, this 10 minute a day practice routine idea. First, you figure out a broad goal, something really big that you want to achieve as a musician. So let's say it's, I want to be comfortable soloing anywhere on the fretboard and just have it be like second nature. I can play anywhere, anytime and not have to worry about hitting a wrong note and just, yeah, fretboard freedom. It's something everyone wants. All right, so that can be your really broad goal, fretboard freedom. Okay. Then you break it into smaller pieces. What are some of the things that a person with amazing control and freedom on the fretboard would be able to do that you would like to do? Well, I'll just give you a few options. Um, a person with excellent fretboard freedom would know every kind of arpeggio up and down the neck, uh, would know chords everywhere, would know how to play all the modes everywhere would know how to do um, you know any scale that 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 stuff really helps with fretboard freedom so let's just pick two of those for an example we'll do arpeggios all over the neck because that's I think the first one I said all over the neck and then we'll do how about um, all the scales <laughs> that's a big one Whoa, oh, yeah, time to spell words, all the scales. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a little smaller so it all fits nicely. Isn't it exciting? I can type and it films what I type. I love technology. Then you break this stuff down into practice items. So we're gonna focus just on arpeggios all over the neck as our subject. We're gonna break that down into little practice items here. So. What's something you can practice for getting all the arpeggios? Well, let's start with one arpeggio. Let's start with A major 7. A major 7. So what's the best way to learn A major 7 all over the neck? Well, first you need to learn it in one place, right? So A major 7 in one position. That can be our very first starting point. That can be our smallest piece. We want to find A major 7 in one position. And so what you do is you learn A major 7 one way. Here's an example. That's, uh, right now the camera's flipped, so you're seeing it like I'm a lefty, but the frets are 5, 9, 7, 6, 7, 6, 7, 9, 5. Ooh, that's a lot of math. But, um, I'll just tab that out and have it below just an A major 7 arpeggio as an example. And so what you do in your 10 minutes is on day one, let's say Sunday, you t spend 10 minutes to get A major 7 in one position absolutely perfect. You should know that scale like, I mean that arpeggio like it's nothing, just you learn it and you spend 10 minutes with the metronome here 
click, 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 and you practice as slow as you need to practice it in order to play it perfectly accurately. That's really actually a little fast for first time learning this arpeggio. We'll play it way slower. At the beginning of the day, you didn't know A major 7, and you have this 10 minute goal of I'm going to learn an A major 7 arpeggio in one spot today. All you have to do is go on the internet and Google uh, A major 7 arpeggio. Just find one. Find one example and learn it. And, you know, try to find a source that's reliable, like me or, you know, Justin Guitar. Um, he's got incredible instructional material, so I'm sure. He's got A major 7 arpeggios somewhere in his massive video library. And, you know, you find A major 7, you learn it, that's 10 minutes. Okay, so now here's the key part. You've got your 10 minutes spent well. You started with no knowledge of A major 7. You ended with the ability to play it. Now the next day, you want to review what you did on day 1, which was A major 7 in one position. And then the next day, you want to set a goal that pushes yourself just a little further and this is up to you however much further you feel a major 7 in another position might be a good one or you could do a major 7 two octaves so instead of just going you can go like this Focus your 10 minutes on really learning that. Always use the metronome. As long as you use the metronome, you'll get better. It's the most valuable practice tool. It just forces you to really focus. It's hard to play with the metronome when you're not focusing. It forces you to play consistently and accurately, and it helps you build better time. And also, you can keep track of where you're at with this. If you're playing it, Without a metronome, you don't know necessarily what speed you're at and where you start to fall apart and where things are easy in terms of tempo. And the metronome certainly helps you uh, keep that together. And so that's day two. All right, you put it in another position. And these steps can be as big as you're comfortable with. You could, you know, do more in each 10-minute practice routine. But the idea is just to take it a little step at a time. So then day three, let's say you do another position. Day four, you look up a, another position, but every day you have to review what you did the day before. And so by the end of a seven day period, you should know A major seven pretty well. And the next week, you wanna make sure you review what you did in week one and set a new goal, little goals, little goals, and divide it into 10 minute segments. So in this series, I'm going to take different subjects and break them down into 10 minute uh, exercises 10 minute um, lessons basically like uh, things you could do in 10 minutes for seven days and uh, I'll do the A major 7 arpeggio next week like full on but I just wanted to show you this method this way of thinking about practice and um, I really want to help you guys with specific things that you want to get better at and I want to help you break down all those things into practice methods and uh, it's all about consistency, it's all about being diligent and practicing every day even if it's a tiny bit and continuing where you left off the day before.